This is First and Ben. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the second episode of season one of my podcast, First and Ben. The clock has struck 12, so it is Saturday, June 20th. My name is Ben Garcia, and I want to thank you for tuning in to today's episode. So to start today, I want to give a shout out to the members of the St. Bonaventure baseball team, the 2020 SBU Intramural Basketball Champs. As the only non-baseball player on the team, our chemistry was still very solid as we ran the tables and went undefeated, winning the championship, rocking the shirt today. So that's why I had to give them the quick shout out. Anyway, today I have a variety of different topics to go into, which includes who is the GOAT of the NBA, what schools could land and or benefit from a men's lacrosse team, the return of pro sports, the great debate of TikTok versus Vine, and public school versus private school sports. Should they be together? Should they have separate championships? If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's just Ben Garcia. You'll find my picture in the profile. And follow my Instagram accounts. My personal is at Ben underscore Garcia 3. And my content account is at Garcia.studios. I post pictures I take, videos I make, and other stuff to my Garcia Studios one, including a preview to each episode. So with that, let's get started. So diving in today and to start off, we're going to talk some hoops. In most years, the NBA Finals would be wrapping up around now. But because of COVID and because of the delay of the NBA season, Unfortunately, we have not had basketball for months. The closest thing to basketball we've really had is the release of the documentary, The Last Dance, a 10-part series on Michael Jordan from his days at the Chicago Bowl and his final season as a Chicago Bowl. What resulted from this documentary was a debate that had gone pretty quiet for quite some time. Who really is the greatest basketball player of all time? Michael Jordan? or LeBron James. So as we dive into that, I'll give my input of who I personally believe, not just that, who I know is the greatest basketball player of all time. Now, before I begin, I never got to see Jordan in his prime, besides the videos. I never got to see you know, Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, and those are some of the greatest players, I think, of all time. Definitely make the top lists. You know, they're Hall of Famers. But just knowing everything that I do know now, watching that documentary, seeing highlights, seeing the stats, it's hands down Michael Jordan. Now, I know there are people out there that are huge LeBron fans and people saying, oh, that's so, that's a bogus. You know, Kid Colin, Newcomb Colin, if you're out there, I'm sorry. But you know, trying to say, if you're a Jordan fan supporter, you're either from the 1980s and 90s or you're just stupid. It's called facts. That's what it is. You compare LeBron and MJ, it's facts. Look at the differences. MJ went to college. He went to University of North Carolina for two or three years. He, as a freshman, 18, 19 years old, hit game-winning shot over Georgetown in the national championship game. So he had already won a championship, still went back to Carolina and was going to come back. But Dean Smith, the late great North Carolina coach, told him to go to the league. And then when he got to the league, he was already several years older. He was already in his 20s. People say LeBron dominated as an 18-year-old. All right, he didn't go and spend like all these points in college. You take away those points from MJ's career in college and throw in the NBA, oh, man, it's not a debate. And just the last stance is all the proof that you could have. You look at all the things that MJ did. You know, some people might say, you know, MJ's he's such an a-hole for the things he said and how he acted in practices. He was a different leader than LeBron. LeBron is a great player. He's still one of the greatest players of all time. Love watching LeBron but he's just a different leader and a different player. LeBron, I forget who put it out. Someone just talked about it the other day I saw on Twitter. LeBron is a leader who welcomes guys in, and, you know, he'll put the, his arm around you and, like, a, more of a welcoming guy. Jordan tests you. 
what he does is he'll he'll call you all these names like he did to his teammates. Just calls them out, calling them trash because he wants to test you. Because if you're willing, if you're mentally there, if your own teammate is going to rip you apart and you're willing to stay there, take it all and go through with it and hit that shot in practice with the game on the line, scrimmage on the line, he knows he can trust you for the game. He knows that if you're willing to put up the BS with him, then he'll have your back when it comes game time. MJ, he took a break from basketball. He won three titles in a row. You know, everybody tries to say, oh, it's again plumbers and everything. Uh, is Isaiah Thomas a plumber? What about Magic Johnson? Larry Bird? Those guys suck. I mean, who are those guys? They're no names. I bet they're not in the Hall of Fame, especially like guys named Draymond Green. I mean, he's NBA All-Star and everything. He's not bad, but he, Draymond Green talks all this talk. He would get dominated by Shaq. People say he's the best defender that LeBron has to go to against. But anyway, going back to MJ, taking a break from basketball, he won three titles, said, I'm bored with basketball. I win so much, I'm going to go play professional baseball at the minor league level, but still. And then was no longer playing basketball, had to train his body for a different sport, and then saw the Bulls struggling and said, you know what, I'm going to go back to basketball again. And then came back, still in half of a seat, joined right before the end of the season in 95, I believe it was. Yeah, 95, came back, still got them to the playoffs. And then in his first full season back, 96, title. 97, title. 98, title. Where's that for LeBron? People talk about the 2007 when the Cavs went to the NBA Finals. So he carried that team by himself through the playoffs. Every single team they played was an average team. Not a great team. An average team. He played against three or four average teams in the NBA playoffs. And there are five teams in NBA history to beat multiple 60-plus win teams, not just in multiple playoffs, in one single playoff run. Five teams in NBA history. You know where they were? 93 Bulls, MJ. 96 Bulls, MJ. 97 Bulls, MJ. Three of those five to beat multiple 60-win teams in a single playoff run? Jordan's Bulls team. The Heat did it, but LeBron wasn't there. It was the 06 Heat that won the title. So trying to say that LeBron does these things that Jordan didn't do, try to say, look at the pure size of LeBron and how athletic he is. Jordan didn't touch a weight in the NBA until he got literally tackled, punched, thrown, clotheslined by the Detroit Pistons and the bad boy Pistons. And then he decided, no, I need to hit a weight room. And then they were able to beat the Pistons and go to win championships. But that brings me to my next point. My view, my top three players of all time, not necessarily top three, like one, two, three, but if you ask Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe, this is my take. The greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan, the greatest athlete of all time to ever play in the NBA, LeBron James. His bounce is ridiculous. His wingspan, ridiculous. He's a freak of an athlete. And then hardest worker to ever play basketball, Kobe Bryant. Nobody has a mentality like him, and he's inspired others. Kyrie Irving, after hitting the game-winning shot to win the NBA Finals for the Cavs, Kyrie called Kobe and said, we did it. He said, I did it. Because he took that mentality from Kobe. So LeBron, greatest athlete of all time. Kobe, the hardest worker of all time. And Jordan, the greatest player of all time. You know, those are my thoughts. You know, agree to disagree. But it's hard to argue some things. So now going into the next topic. You know, with... COVID going on and schools having to cut teams for financial reasons. It's tough, but that's how it is. That's what they have to do. That's what they think they have to do. And seeing articles by Chris Jazremski, 
put out on Twitter and online. It's got me thinking about how schools can add men's lacrosse and how this sport can continue to grow. Adding men's lacrosse, while some parts, you know, travel, gear, some things are expensive, but that's just how college sports is. Men's lacrosse, scholarship-wise, let's say you have, well, no matter how many guys you have, 45 guys on a team, only 12.6 scholarships. Have to divide them up, but there are only 12.6 scholarships for men's lacrosse. You don't have full scholarships for everybody on the team. You don't have the numbers of football, all 80 plus guys. You don't have 70 scholarships, 60 scholarships. You don't have the same facilities. You don't have the same costs as football. So if you're a school without a football team, adding men's lacrosse is great because you're having, you're getting that contact sport on campus that people love just something about, you know, seeing these athletes just hit each other flying around it's a fast game physical game so bring that to to a school without football bring somewhat of that that football mentality to the university and then without those scholarships all those scholarships as football with only the 12.6 you're bringing in all this these kids expanding your market let's say to the east coast or taking kids from canada California, Texas, Florida, wherever, because the game's just growing nationally and internationally. You're getting more kids into the school, spending money by paying the school, and you're not paying as much to those kids. It's a great benefit for the university to take these people on. And in Chris, Chris Jazromsky's article, you know, he talked about NJIT going, joining the America East, Robert Morris leaving for the Horizon League. And now what do they do with their lacrosse programs? And you have schools like Cleveland State, who's an independent, St. Bonaventure, who's an A-10 school but plays in the MAC conference, my school. And then you have Detroit Mercy, a Horizon League member also, along with Cleveland State, but Detroit is in the MAC with St. Bonaventure. And if you take Robert Morris, you take Cleveland State and Detroit, who are three Horizon League members, and they create a lacrosse only conference you can take St. Bonaventure who's really an A-10 school put them in there that's four you add Central Michigan because that's a school that cut their men's indoor and outdoor track programs due to COVID but they need another men's sport in the next few years to maintain their NCAA status you bring in men's lacrosse Boom, that's another team. Utah, independent school. You bring them in, boom. Six teams, you got yourself an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament where you get a school like Hampton, put them into that league. You got six, seven, and you're expanding the sport. You're growing it. And you look at schools like Marquette and you can say it's possible to have success. It's possible to branch the school to bigger name the sport to bigger name schools and have it be a success. They win the Big East in their fourth year as a program, knocking off Denver for the first time. And they host an NCAA tournament game versus the eventual national champs, North Carolina, which they lost by one. You look at the fans and the market that has grown to Marquette University. You bring that to other schools, Division One schools that don't have football. Those are the best places to go for men's lacrosse. And even look at Utah. Utah can do it. So why not Arizona State? Why not Arizona? Why not Cal? I mean, Pepperdine. They're a smaller school. Add men's lacrosse there. UC Irvine. I mean, it's just Terrence Foy, I believe. Terry Foy at Inside the Cross wrote a great article to talk about. I believe it was him talking about the benefits of adding men's lacrosse at schools and how they're possible. And unfortunately for a team like Furman, they had to cut their program. And it's a shame they were, you know, it's a South Carolina warm weather. But there's so many more opportunities across the country that 
can help grow the school by adding the sport. And speaking of that, we talk about the return of sports professionally. Now with the PLL, the Premier Lacrosse League, the brand new league that just started last year, entering year two. And this happens, you know, what do they do? Is it going to have to fold immediately after one year? How can they have a season? They're not going to be able to do it. What Paul and Mike Rabel did with the new championship series out in Salt Lake City, Utah, is a great idea. You know, they're having these teams. They're going to do pool play, play a couple games, and they go into tournament style. Kind of, it's just like summer lacrosse. You know, you have these tournaments, you do pool play, like nap town. You know, you have your games on the first day. And they go and they seed them, and then you go and play championship like the playoffs another day, and then you go have championship game the last day. Just it's such a great opportunity for the sport to grow. No Olympics, that time slot, boom, let's put our games there. We had that partnership with NBC. Now we got time slot for our games on national TV. And unfortunately for baseball, what's been going on with, you know, their player, the MLB and the MLBPA, it's just – chaos right now so with this opportunity that the PLL has is to take these fans that don't know too much you know look back just a few years ago say professional lacrosse they say who who plays professional lacrosse now it's you got the today show where they did the announcement you got all these magazines you got all these groups all these people wanting to know more about the PLL they want it they don't want to just know it. They want to watch it. They want to embrace it. They want to be there. They want the PLL connected with them. So this opportunity that they have with this time slot and the TV deals and all the other deals they're getting, the sport is only going to keep growing at a fast pace. And you um, know, it sucks for what's going on with baseball, but this is an opportunity for lacrosse to take over, take some of those fans, say, look what we're doing. We're a physical sport that you can go play, have fun, be fast, be physical. You can go play college off of that. You can go play pros because now there's a league in which you can be just a lacrosse player. You don't have to have all these other jobs and then, you know, fly out for a weekend and go play some games and then you have to go back. The PLL. It's just an amazing opportunity, and this sport is going to just continue to grow and reach new fans. It's just an amazing opportunity. Now, for that, we go to the MLB. It's just tough. I mean, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, both sides are being, you know, the MLB says something, that, and the owner saying, we want to, we want a season, and then saying, oh, we don't really want it. Same with the commissioner. But there's so many parts to both sides that is ridiculous. And say, we want this amount of games. We want more games, more salary. Obviously, yeah, you're, you want to be paid to play. You don't want to just do something for no money. But when you're a millionaire athlete and you're still getting millions, or if not, like $900,000, there are a lot of minor league players that don't have jobs now that would love to play for just – couple hundred thousand or even the two million dollars i would do anything to be able to go and finish my season i miss my my freshman season redshirt freshman season i'd come back from surgery and it's cut short i would do anything to play these guys have the opportunity to make money from playing which i don't as a college athlete and they refuse to play because they want more games and more of everything they want more tv deals and then when you look at the owner side they need to give up some more. They need to side with the players more because the players are the ones playing, not the owners. They're getting a little too ridiculous with, we want these certain things. Both sides need to grow up. At the end of the day, both sides need to grow up. And for the NBA, I mean, most people know what's going on with them. They're returning to Orlando. Florida's been breaking out with cases of COVID. And they have all the different things to try to get players to go down and to keep them healthy and everything. 
I mean, they're the closest of the major sports with everything under control, along with the NHL. But, I mean, the NBA is the NBA. They're, they're the most under control in this situation of professional leagues. Our fourth topic today, TikTok versus Vine. Now, for those who remember Vine, those were, quote unquote, the OG days. Those were the days of the six second videos in which you can do whatever, whatever your creative mindset can do in six seconds, you know, combine it into six seconds, try to make a funny video go viral. And the amount of people that have gotten built careers off of making six second videos, there's no TikTok without Vine. The person I always think of, David Dobrik. David Dobrik built his lifestyle because of Vine. He was in high school in Vernon Hills, Illinois, outside of Chicago. Made some TikToks. They start to go viral. Continues. Now he starts vlogging as he goes out to LA. And then his videos get more popular and more popular. He starts to get deals and all the seat geek deals and giving his friends cars. And now look at them. I mean, this guy has really just goes out and does whatever he wants and just films it and puts it into a four minute, 20 second video. It all started with a six second video. TikTok, I mean, it's still fun. It's today's version of, it's today's version of Vine in a way, but Vine, you know, that's that's where it all started. That's where everything started. So in my opinion, I gotta go with Vine being better because TikTok, it's so complicated now with it can be anywhere from just a few seconds up to a minute. I think it is creative what they've kind of done with it, you know, evolve it. They have all these brand deals off of it. And you know, you get partnerships, all the effects, face effects, different effects, yada, yada, yada. And there is a lot of creative content on there. People like Addison Ray blowing up from it, from just doing dances, Charlie D'Amelio. Uh, shout out to my boy, Jack Kenny. You know, he's got one, he only has one TikTok, but I guess he's TikTok famous off of that one. Um, but yeah, I got to go with Vine Bean being the best since day one. And then finally, the debate of public school and private school sports in high school. Should there be one championship for both sides? Should there be two? There are some public schools that can't make it far into playoffs because you look at the state of Pennsylvania being from PA in football, you have Archbishop Wood, you have LaSalle, you have St. Joe's Prep. I mean, these schools dominate football. And then states like New Jersey, you have uh, Don Bosco. You, know, you have IMG from Florida, Bishop Gorman from Nevada, modern day California. But there are still in other sports, in basketball, in lacrosse, lacrosse for Pennsylvania. The Central League, which is a public school league, which my Springfield team is a part of, my Springfield High School, Springfield Delco is a part of. The Central League has been in the state championship every year since, I think every single year of the PIAA sponsoring men's uh, boys lacrosse in 2009. I want to say every year, basically, there has been a Central League team in the championship game. I mean, now it's split into two, but you have Conestoga's domination of the late 2000s into the early 10s, and you know, them and LaSalle going back and forth. And then you go back to 2014 when Conestoga, no, Pencrest wins the state championship. You go to 2015. Radner wins the state championship. 2016, Springfield. 2017, Springfield. They split it, but in the other was Conestoga again. 
2018. You have Strathaven in the two-way championship. 2019, you have Conestoga in the 3A. It's just, so you could say, you know, oh, we want the smaller public schools that don't get the chance because they're losing to the private schools. We want two separate. Well, then why are these public schools making it? And in football this past year, Archbishop Wood defeated Cheltenham on a last-second touchdown. Cheltenham has never been to the state championship before. But that just shows that public schools can compete. My only thing is, having gone to a private school for a few years in the Interact, what I don't like is the Interact separated itself from PIAA back when PIAA really started having for lacrosse, their uh, um, like the Interact Challenge, and then the PIAA championships were starting. Because now it's who's really the best. You have the Interact schools, the Haverford, Malvern, saying we're the best team in the state. Did you win the state championship? No, they don't compete for a state championship. So how can you be the best team in the state when you don't even compete for the playoffs? And then you have the other sports where they have the PESA tournament in which there are 16 teams, nine of which come from the Interac, which are automatically in the playoffs, and they call themselves state champs. It's not a state tournament if there's only 16 teams that autom basically automatically make that tournament. It's not. So until the Interac decides to join back with the PIAA, I refuse to accept those schools. You know, they have Kiski Prep, Mercersburg, ANC, until they join back with the PIAA, which they should. PIAA for public and private schools should be together for championships. Because that is where you find out who really is the best team in this state. Because for as long as you separate them, they will never, you'll never know who the true champion is. And it is possible for public schools to win. And with that note, that will wrap it up for today's episode. I want to thank everybody for who's still here listening at this point of the podcast. Again, make sure to go follow my channels my Instagram account, follow my Twitter, that's at BG3Ben, and go follow, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post these podcasts on, since I can't figure out how to do it on SoundCloud. I believe I need to have another account and like pay money for that or whatever it is. So make sure to give this a like, subscribe, share it, share it to your friends, share it to family, share it to everyone, share it on social media, and stay tuned for my next episode. Thank you very much and have a great day.